Hi there everyone, my name is Etra from Etra's Games for Non-Gamers, and today I want to show you how to make custom interactables, abilities, and items in my Etra Starter Assets package. If you haven't already seen the previous video in the top right, where I talk about how to simply use the asset, watch that first. I made this package because I noted there were no free character controllers that had various abilities or were easily expandable on the asset store. Which is a shame because I needed a free expandable character controller for a free Unity non-gamer tutorial creator I'm working on. If you want the most updates on that project, follow my Patreon or my main YouTube channel, Etra's Games for Non-Gamers. Today, this video will show you how to expand this asset and how to share your new features with the community. If you have trouble following this tutorial and still want to help, please join my Discord, Etra's Lab, in the link below. I'd love to see you there. We'll start with interactables, which are very simple. All you gotta do is make a new folder for the object and interactable objects. Take your interactable object data, the scripts, models, prefabs, and more, and just drag it into that new folder. I'll do so with this moving platform I made. And that's basically the only fancy thing you need to do with interactable objects. Now we'll make the next most complex resource, an ability. Let's make an example forward dash ability. To make a new ability, we want to go over to the character and then find the abilities folder. I want this to be a general ability, so I'll hop in here, right click, create, and call this ability dash. When we open this up, we want to set this up with the ability script defaults. So for that, we want to make the parent of this script the base ability script. Then we can write in three ability override functions. Ability start, ability update, and ability late update. These will run at start, update, or late update accordingly, but it will run these updates in a certain order that you can define over in the ability manager. Right here. For this dash ability, all I want to have happen is when a button is pressed, have our character bolt forward. So for that, the natural question to ask is when what button is pressed? We'll have to define that in our input system. If I go over to our character asset base here, we can click our starter asset input actions and open it up. Here we can add a new action, dash. I want dash to be a pressed button for its action, like jump, instead of a held button, like sprint. So I'm just going to go over here and duplicate the jump action, call it dash, and change my input to let's say E. Once that is added, we actually have to do a bit more and go to the starter asset inputs and add our new input there. Here, I'm going to basically copy the variable and two functions that jump has for our new input. Now that we have our dash input added, we can go back to our dash ability and make a reference to those starter asset inputs. We want to make sure to get this component from the parent because remember, the ability manager isn't holding the starter asset inputs, the character base parent is. So make sure you select get component in parent here. Above that, I'll also make a float variable, dash range, that defines how far forward our dash goes. So the first thing we want to do is in our ability update, use a variable that's in all Etra ability base classes, which is basically saying if this ability is not enabled, then we're going to want to return and do nothing for that frame. Next, we can say if starter assets inputs dash is pressed, then we want to apply a forward force to our character. In the main controller, I have it set up so that you can make an immediate reference to the main controller by typing out etra character main controller dot instance. I also have two custom functions for moving the admittedly finicky Unity character controller. The first is for adding a constant force you want to apply to the character every frame for something like movement, wind, or a treadmill. The second down here is for adding an impulse force to our character, and that is exactly what we need for our dash. We'll launch our character in the forward direction by dash range amount. Next, we'll make sure to set inputs dash to false so we don't have a infinitely pressed down dash button. Once this is saved, we need to make sure to go over to our character ability manager 
and add our new dash ability to it. And there we go. Our character dashes to where it's facing if I press E. And this works in the first person template or the third person template. And the new ability even pops up in the character creator. Since it can be spammed though, I'll add a cooldown to the ability and now it should be complete. For our example item, I'm going to make a sword. Just like the ability scripts, the usable item scripts have a parent script. Usable items base class. Here we have a function that gets the name of the prefab you want to load, and we have functions that handle procedural equip and unequip animations. I'll make a new script, usable item FPS sword, and have its parent be Etra FPS usable item base class. When I do this, it requires that I make an override of the get name of prefab to load function. What this does is it loads that specific prefab by name using a custom set of resource and component loading functions in Etra's resource grabbing functions.cs. Once the prefab is loaded, it runs its equip animation and sets the prefab as the active item. When the player is done using the item, it runs the unequip animation and deletes the instance of the prefab once it is off screen. For our sword, we need to make the prefab that is loaded and destroyed. I recommend making two prefabs when you make an item. The first one I'm going to make here is the prefab base with an animator. To make that, I create an empty game object, I'll call it FPS sword base prefab, and I'll add that to item prefab bases with animators. Then I'll delete the original from the scene. I'll open up the new prefab, then I'll go over to models and drag my sword model in there. Then I'll attach our sword model to the empty game object. This prefab is going to run all of the sword's animations. Next, I'll make a usable item group prefab for the sword. This group will handle the procedural bob and sway animations, offset, in any reference game objects like the firing position of a gun. To make this, I'm actually going to duplicate the flashlight item because I know the flashlight is in a good position for our character. I'll call this FPS Sword Group. The parent of the flashlight is called Offset and Sway Animations. This object and its attached script controls how much sway and bob an item has and how relatively heavy it will look compared to other items. As I mentioned last video, YouTuber Buffalo provided this code, and he has got a great video breaking all of it down if you want to make your movement behavior very unique. I'll take our sword's base prefab and add it in here. I'll also move it over to where the flashlight is, because I know that's a good position for the item to be in. We'll delete the flashlight, and then finally we want to go to the top and reselect that this item is in the Etra FPS usable item layer and change all the children. This way, it's visible to the FPS item overlay camera and our sword doesn't clip through walls. Now we can go back to our item's code. For our item, we'll say to load the prefab FPS sword group. We're also going to add the awake function and say at the beginning of the game, make sure this script is disabled. Now I'll save and add the FPS sword script to the usable item manager and run the game. As you can see, when selected, the sword is loaded, runs an equip animation, and then procedurally sways and bobs when I move around. When unselected, it runs an unequip animation and deletes itself when it's off the screen. We've got a good starting base here, but we have a few issues. First, the sword is way too big. Secondly, the equip animations don't fully hide the sword when equipping or unequipping. And finally, the sword has no animations or functionality. We'll tackle these three issues one by one. First, to adjust the sword's size, I would take the game window and move it to somewhere where you can see it. Uh, and then let's go to 16 by 9 aspect. And then what I want to do is go to our loaded usable items groups and then add it to our player camera route right here. So we've got the sword in visibility. I'm going to open that up and go all the way down to our sword model and adjust it to however I need. I think that's good, so I'm going to go over to the transform of the sword, take this, click copy, component, and then I'm going to open up the FPS sword group 
and then make sure I apply those same uh, properties to the sword here. And then I want to open up the base prefab and uh, make sure that transform is overrided here as well. And then if I delete the sword and run the game, let me pop this back over here, we can see the sword is at its new size. So now that our positioning is great, let's fix our equip animation. If we slow this animation down, we can see that the sword starts and disappears facing 35 degrees tilted down. To see more about this procedural animation, we can go back to the FPS usable item base class, and if we open up this animation section here, we can see that the equip animation simply sets the rotation of the weapon to the unequip rotation, then moves it to the equip rotation over the course of item equip speed, which is 0.2 seconds by default. Since these are all virtual functions, these procedural animations and variables can all be overwritten in the sword class. By default, objects are tilted 35 degrees down for their unequip animation. For our sword, we can make that 90. To do that, I'll go into our sword script and override the get item unequip rotation function. And instead of returning 35 degrees, I'll have the sword tilt down 90 degrees for its animation. Now if we run the game, you'll see that the equip and unequip animations are perfect. Finally, we'll want to add functionality to our sword script. For now, all I want to have happen is if the shoot input is pressed, the sword does a swing animation. First, we'll make that animation, then we'll add it in code. To make a nice animation, I'm going to put my game view over here again, and then I'm going to go to our player camera route and drag the sword back there again. And then I'm gonna go all the way down to our FPS sword base prefab and add an animator to it. Here, if we go to the animation tab, we can create a basic idle animation that just holds the default position and rotation of the sword. We can make a swing animation, and then we can use the animator and a trigger to translate between the two animations. When that's made, make sure to go to the group and go to overrides and apply these changes to your prefab. And then again, make sure to enter that group, go to the sword base prefab and apply the changes to the base prefab as well. Finally, we'll delete the sword from the scene and we can hop back to our code. Now that we have the animation, we can finally code it in. First, we're going to have to make references for the character starter inputs and the sword animator. Instead of using start, most of the time we'll want to use the function on enable when working with our items. This function on enable will run right after the item has played its equip animation. So when the script is enabled, we want to get the starter inputs from the character asset base, so we will get that component from the parent, and then we are going to use the shoot input, and we want to make sure this input starts as false so the sword doesn't immediately swing when drawn. Next, to get the animator, we need to get a reference to the active sword prefab. For that, we need to get a reference to the item manager and ask for its current item prefab. Then we can say find an animator component in the sword's children. Finally, on update, if shoot is pressed, we'll want to activate the swing trigger and then set shoot to false. And with that, our new ability and item is complete. I mean, I'll add in cooldown, make that animation better and a bit more before release. But again, the extra fun part is we can go over to window character controller and boom, we've got the dash there and we've got the sword automatically added to the character creator right there. Now we've got some really nice starter abilities, but here's my wish list and really what I need for the free non-gamer curriculum program I'm working on. I want to add a ton of abilities to this thing. All the stuff just shown, I've put on like a bounty board for people to work together on in my Discord. So if you wanna help me add more to this free asset, please join the Etra's Lab Discord linked below. If you like what I'm working on here and want to support updates to this tool and other free tools I'm working on, check out my Etra's Games for Non-Gamers Patreon, also linked below, 
to get exclusive updates and custom messages in my projects. Thanks for watching, and I hope we can create something amazing with this tool. I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.